So you and I know that there's a lot of reasons why you could upgrade or not upgrade to a new camera. Now, if you have a cell phone or you have a DSLR and you're trying to upgrade or you have a mirrorless camera and you're trying to upgrade, this will help you find out whether or not you should upgrade and what you need to know if you do upgrade. Uh, I'm gonna ask you guys 10 questions basically to let you know or help you find out if you need to upgrade. So first question is, do you have a cell phone? Now I'm assuming that most people do have a cell phone, but if you have a cell phone and you're not using it and you've never took pictures in a consistent fashion, you probably wanna start using your cell phone first, understanding what its flaws are, understanding what you can't do, and then start to want more from that cell phone. And that will fuel your want to get a new camera because it's with the, the expenses of new cameras and new lenses and the, the more you spend the better you get you're going to start to need a fuel something to make you want more out of your cameras and i know you see stuff on instagram facebook or you know the media or anything like that on your, your phone but you know youtube but if you see these images and you want to upgrade your camera for what photos or video you're going to need a fuel, something to keep you going, something to give you a want to do this. And then number nine would be, uh, let's see, do you, do you see yourself having a future with the camera? What future do you see you have with this camera? Are you just gonna be straight casual and have a big DSLR or have a high powered uh, uh, mirrorless camera and you're just gonna have that expensive piece of gear with you all the time, just doing casual images in the park or with the flowers, you can do that. That's totally something that you can do, especially if you have the money to afford it. It's like having a Lamborghini and going out and just having casual drives with it on Saturday. It's fine if you can afford that kind of lifestyle and you can do that, go ahead and do that. But if you don't have something that you want to do with a, you know, a camera that's big is going to harbor its own weight. It's going, it, it needs some kind, with a camera that big, it's gonna need its own attention. It's going to beg for attention from the people that's around you and it's going to make you either want to do something with it or either get rid of it the first week you have it because it's big, it's heavy, and it's not like your average cell phone. So be thinking about that upgrade from cell phone to a DSLR or a real camera with real image quality. Well, I'm not saying that the cell phones have bad image quality. I'm just saying in the comments below, they're gonna they're gonna get me for everything I said. So number eight will be, uh, what type of pictures would you wanna take? With this new drive, with this new ideal for what you wanna do with your camera, what kind of pictures are you gonna take? Are you gonna go in one, gen one general genre or are you going to be a generalist? Are you gonna do multiple genres? So, I mean, I know how to do multiple genres of photography. I can do your landscapes, your long exposures. I can use filters and stuff like that and sit outside for hours and hours and hours and hours and maybe come home with one picture. That's great because that becomes the lifestyle of a landscape photographer. You go out at certain times of the day and you don't have control over the environment that you're in and what it looks like. And you have to, golden hour is golden, especially to landscape photographers because you got to go out at a certain time, wake up early in the morning. I can do all that stuff. I can wake up at four o'clock in the morning if that meant catching the lunar eclipse or a solar eclipse or something like that or something crazy that's happening. It, it doesn't matter to me. And of course, I'm not using, I'm not saying that in a logical sense. I'm just saying, if there was something big outside that I need to see, and I need to capture pictures of, and I need to wake up at a certain time, I can do that. Are you gonna do that? Or say for instance, you wanna get into portraiture. Are you going to get into portraiture as a business? Because you're taking pictures of other people and chances are they're gonna want it. Chances are you're gonna to have to make a business out of it. So, are you gonna be able to handle the demands of the people that are gonna want pictures of themselves? And think about taking a picture of a person how scrutinizing that can be and how critical they can be of their own looks and how critical they can be of you since they have a cell phone that can probably take higher uh, megapixel images that you probably can with your camera if you're just upgrading for the first time. Now, if you're getting something, you know, an A7 Mark IV, <laughs> A7R Mark IV, then uh, you, you probably have the money to, to back it up, but if you don't, you're going, to be, you're going to be competing with cell phones if you don't have a lot of money to invest in that DSLR. Um, what type of camera do you need? Now, this is another one that you need to really, really think about. What type of camera do I need? Do I need a video-heavy camera or photo-heavy camera? Those are the two main cameras that you get on the market nowadays. Now, these are the two main visuals that you see in the media. But 
you have to understand exactly are you going to be doing more pictures than video because video has certain specs that pictures don't don't need necessarily for example a 4k camera is not needed for photography as a matter of fact 4k is way too small of a resolution in most cameras you see at least an 8 megapixel image on at any given day so you might want to think about that too what kind of camera will be you be using for this situation and if you're going to buy a camera that has both video and picture which is going to be most of you um how much are you willing to spend because if they do both great then you're going to be spending a lot of money so that leads us into the next thing um what is your budget i mean to start off with any used camera or any camera on the market you're looking at at least 250 dollars $250 will get you a decent lowest bar tier camera, you know. But if you're upgrading, and chances are if you are, you could be looking like from, from I'm talking about if you're really upgrading from a DSLR to another DSLR or a DSLR to a mirrorless, you're looking at at least one grand, two grand, three grand, or six grand. Those are the main tiers of camera cost. And two grand is not something that they really have out. They they had it out a lot more in the past, but two grand is now the bar for uh, I think a uh, mirrorless n new full frame mirrorless cameras. So you know those are some landmark prices that you might be wanting to think about if you're really really trying to upgrade. Now if you get them used, you can always get them at a lower price, but they're still if they're especially at the top of the line, they're still gonna be around the two hundred three, uh, excuse me, two thousand three thousand um, range. So. Um, you have to think about your budget and uh, how long you're going to be working to get this camera because it's not just the camera, it's the lens. So you're not just buying a camera just to buy a camera. The cameras don't actually, the bodies don't have that much value. The lenses keep the value over time. So if you can buy a good lens and put it on a subpar, maybe like a T5i or T6i or T7i, don't get the T5i. I told you guys not to get the T5i, but that was just a generic name. But if you can get it and you can put it on a T7i, that's a good good combination. If the camera is less than the lens, it can still be a good combination because the cameras don't update all that much and the lenses keep their value. That means they're already good almost no matter how old they are. Now the older, older lenses are really, really bad, but you can get some decent old lenses too. And that's why they don't lose their value. So you have that. And then you also have what brand are you gonna buy? Now, like I told you, these brands will lull you into a security with their lenses and stuff like that you have to think about what lens uh lens amount that you want and and how how much you're willing to spend for that lens now I, what i mean by lens amount is how many lenses do they have at their disposal for that specific camera that you have how many lenses do they have and then if they have more lenses if they have more older lenses then the newer lenses are going to be uh cheaper because they're going to keep making updates of those lenses so if i get the 24 to 105 version 1 is going to be better than getting uh, the 21, 24 to 105 version 2 because it's going to be cheaper for me, but you're going to lose out some sharpness. You're going to lose out on the small minuscule updates, and sometimes they're good updates that you can think about, but some lenses are just sharp, and they do a good job, like the Magic Drain Pipe, uh, the 135 from Canon, the 135 from um, Sam Yang. It, all these lenses are great. So... Think about what brand you're getting into because it's all about the lenses, baby. It's all about the lenses. Now you're talking about hobbyist or pro. Number four, what uh, are you going to be a hobbyist or a pro? If you're going to be a hobbyist, you have to understand that, that it comes with its own responsibility. You got to take care of your lenses. You got to take care of this because chances are if you're going to upgrade your camera, you're going to get an interchangeable lens camera. There's no more point and shoots on the market that are relatively new. You can get some old ones, but they're probably broken. It's so easy to break a, a point and shoot camera because of the lens. If you drop it, the lens just is designed in the camera. And if you break the lens, you pretty much break the camera. There's really no going back after that. There's no reason to really get it fixed. They're probably going to charge you a lot more money to get it fixed. So, uh, yeah. Hobbyist or pro, think about it. If you're going to be a pro, then there's a heavy responsibility because you're dealing with the demands of the environment or the people that you work for or however you're getting your money. So, um, And then number three would be workload. Think about the workload, the daggone workload. You have to understand that unlike taking a picture with your cell phone and poking a screen and then sending it straight to Instagram, you have this workflow now that you're going to have to get an SD card reader, CF card reader, uh, uh, what's that? CFast card reader, and then you have the XD, uh, XQD 
card with all these any kind of proprietary card that you have for your camera or just regular generic card that you have for your camera you're going to have to put it in some kind of card reader that either your computer has or you have to buy that card reader and then you have to wait till it uploads and then think about the memory and the storage this whole process is way bigger than just poking it on your cell phone and then forgetting about how much memory it takes until the memory says it's low like most people do so the workload is definitely a part of what you want to think about and then the the business and and, and the storage is number two think about it you're going to be spending money taking and saving these pictures and then how long do your clients want you to save those pictures are you charging them enough how much are you charging it? and is this photo equipment paying for itself all this stuff and then think about the storage over time where is it going to be stored is it going to have backup is it going to have redundancy is it going to be on the cloud should it be on the cloud what all this other stuff and think about that responsibility if they asked you for a picture five ten years ago they've done that to me before it's definitely something that can be very very sensitive and nerve-wracking if you don't have some type of organization and some type of memory base where you can actually go and find the metadata of these images so you can take these pictures and number one the biggest reason to know if you ready or need to upgrade your camera is the scrutiny that's one of the biggest reasons uh, uh, why taking photography is not so easy. Is probably number the number one reason why photography is not so easy because everybody's looking and watching you. Not only watching you in the field because you probably got a big camera with a big lens, but they're looking at your work. Everything that you do, they're looking at it. As a matter of fact, no, almost more than any medium, more than any work in a work environment people experience what you produce immediately even faster than fast food they experience what you immediately if you allow them to see the pictures of course and in this environment where you have cell phones that can show you a live read out of the picture while you're taking it when you take it after you take it there's no way of really getting around showing the images immediately to your client because that you want them to know that you're you're a good photographer or even your friend even if you're a hobbyist, they want to know if you're the guy they need to come to to be taking the pictures. And if you get good, they're going to continue to think of you to have this over and over and over and over again. This continued scrutiny of your work, what you do, and this judgmentalness of people's opinions and stuff like that. It, will, it can keep people out of the photography business. And one thing you really need to understand is that when you get a name, it's kind of hard to erase that. If people know that you're good at what you do, they're going to want it and want, want more out of you. And you have to be able to handle some people thinking that you are crap. Some th people thinking you're the best at the exact same time. Think of what that might do to a human that's really, really sensitive about their artwork. You know, we're all artists here and we're all sensitive about our artwork a lot of the times. I'm Devin with Central Effect Studios. Thanks for watching. And maybe you know more about whether you need a new camera upgraded camera or just your first camera in general hopefully i helped you it's really hot in here i'm trying to make this video without the audio affecting uh or being affected by the um the air condition itself i'm done with Central studios and thanks for watching guys